Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. Midweek Wednesday. Hope you're having a good week so far. Couple things to get to today. I'm making this video early, but um, because I have a couple things to do this week. Um, on Fridays, last Friday, I was watching my good buddy Reggie on the road. Reggie brought up a, a problem that he was having, a situation that we've all come across uh, about a wallowed out screw hole in uh, a piece of equipment that he's working on. And he was saying, you know, am I better off putting in some wedges or should I drill it out and put a dowel? You know, he was just kicking around the idea, which is a great thing in what this channel and our channels are all about. Get input from other people, other people have done this before and you know their experiences and it helps us all out right so I thought it would be a great way to start today's episode because uh I've I've had this issue a couple times and I found a good way to deal with it so uh let's get right to it. okay first uh, let me apologize for your water in the background that's coming through the electrical box thank you Con Ed <laughs> so don't worry about it. It's it's okay. It'll be stopped soon because it stopped raining. Uh, let's talk about this issue here. It happens to all of us at one time or another. Well, a hole will be wallowed out in a piece of wood where the screw won't grip anything. And, you know, we come to the dilemma of what do you do to fill that hole? I tried to make these holes look similar to Reggie's holes where they're a little bit wallowed out. And he still had some threads in there, but... Now, there's a couple things. You know, some people get a longer screw. They drill a little hole and try and get to deep wood that's uh, still good down there. Uh, but here's that there's a couple issues. Whenever you have a hole that's like this, you know, that your screw pulled out of and you want to fix it. Sometimes it doesn't matter where the screw is, okay? Sometimes you could just fill this in and, you know, put a screw over here or next to it or whatever. And it doesn't matter. You'll get fresh wood. But... Most times that we deal with this, the screw has to go back in the exact same position. Like with Reggie. Reggie's, I don't know if that was a level or whatever, but it's holding something in. And, it, you know, it might be a flange with a hole in it that goes over and it has to match up perfectly. This is the, where the issue comes in. If you were to drill a hole out of here and put a dowel in here, okay, when you drill that hole, that hole is not going to be exact where... It was. You, the, the dowel will it, it just inevitably go one or two thousandths or three thousandths to the left, to the right. And then what you'll do is you'll try and drill a hole in the middle of the dowel. And when you finally put that flange back over, you're going to see the hole doesn't line up. Now it's going to twist the flange. It's going to look like junk. So this is uh, what I have found the best way to do it. So here we have a couple ways. Now, if, if this was like a doorknob or something and just one of the screws fell out of the plate around the doorknob, you can easily do the old fashioned fix of taking a toothpick and toothpicks come in so handy in the shop. But you could take a toothpick, break off a piece here so that it's like this. And then when you put this in, it'll tighten up against the toothpick. But even then, it'll cock the screw to one side because you have the toothpick over here. And when you have like a flathead screw, that isn't going in straight and it's cocked to one side, it looks like junk, right? It looks like crap. So how do we fix this? How do we get this correct to do it upright? Now, first thing you have to look at is determine how much damage is around the hole. Now, if, uh, if you have a lot of damage around the hole and, and this is something that's gonna be seen, you're gonna want a larger dowel. Uh, if it's just something that's going to be under that flange, you could get a dowel that's just bigger than the hole. So that's the first determination you make. So let's get some doweling and see what we have. Okay, so here is where I keep some of my doweling up on the other, other side of the shop. It's a little bit of a mess. You know, it's mixed up metal and 40 years worth of keeping dowels. But it's good to have a stock of different dowels that you could use. Here are some dowels that I actually found. One of my walks, a whole bunch of those. They're always, you never know when you're gonna use them for making kites or something. So let's pick out a, an appropriate size dowel. Here's the dowel I have chosen for this job. It's about three eighths of an inch thick. Um, it's painted, I prefer a, a bare bone dowel for the glue, but you know, again, you wanna use your worst equipment for, you know, 
this is something, it's practice or whatever. And also, if you have a dowel that's warped, this is another good use for, for that dowel. That's why if you have short pieces, you don't throw them away. You put them in a can. So now what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is take the, the, we need to know the thickness of this to get the exact hole. The hole that you drill in here, you want it to be a press fit. And uh, you, dowels have all different sizes. You can't, you know, they're not going to match up with the drill bit. So you have to have a test block and test it out. But before we get to that, the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to put a line directly over the center of these holes with a, a sharp pencil and a rule. Now, this is one of the few times a sharp pencil comes in real handy in the shop. Otherwise, usually that point is too fragile for shop work and will break. But in this case, we want that line and we took a, a regular rule and we put a uh, lines over the direct center of the holes. It doesn't matter what orientation these lines are in as long as they go out about a, you know, a half an inch away from the center of the hole. See over here, I have an X. Over here, I have a cross. Over here... I have another type of X, you see, but the one thing is they all center in the middle, okay? So that's important. Remember that. Now we're going to get the right drill bit for this. Now, traditionally, the bits we use most of the time are general purpose bits like this, and they have a, usually a 118 degree point on there and when you drill it. But for wood, however, a lot of times, especially pine, I grew up my whole life using pine. It's one of the hardest woods to work with. It's great, strong, light. The problem is you get a lot of tear out. If I tried to drill this hole with this bit, I would probably do the same thing, get more tear out, especially with this kind of, this is a uh, not even a good grade pine. It's a, an old two by four uh, or a piece of one. Now, so this is a, a typical bit we knew, normally use. This is a brad point bit and a brad point bit has the benefits of having two points on the side that'll cut that, you know, stop the tear out from happening. So this is preferred. And even better is a forest in a bit. A forest in a bit here cuts a beautiful hole and it also leaves a flat bottom hole. These are real nice, but not everybody has them. So you do it what you can. But if you only have this kind of bit, you know, work up slowly to get to here. Don't try and do it with this one first because you will get more tear out. Now on a scrap piece of wood, and this is why we keep all these scrap pieces of wood around the shop for, for jobs just like this. Now I drilled out a couple holes here with bits that are about that size. Now, this bit here, I did the bottom hole. And I'm going to check the dowel that we're going to use. And you can see here, it's a little bit loose. See how that moves? I'm sorry, it was out of frame. It's a little bit loose there, you see that? Now, I use this bit and a bit in the second hole. And you can see here, that is a much better fit. I'm pushing it in, look. No slop at all. This is the one we want to use. Uh, this one here was obviously way too big, you know, but we want one that's going to be a nice snug fit just like that. Once you have the proper drill bit, then you're going to drill out all your holes. Now, it's important to remember it doesn't matter if the drill moves a sixteenth of an inch either way up or down. It don't matter. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle. In fact, with this one here, I'm going to move the drill over a little bit and purposely drill off center to show you why it wouldn't matter with this system. Okay, we drilled our three holes. Notice this one is off center. I drilled it specifically a little bit to the left. But uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dowel and we're going to take a small piece of the dowel. And we're going to glue them and pound them in there so they're pretty tight. We're going to glue these small pieces of dowels into the holes. But before we do, if you ever come across a pair of long nose, these aren't the short ones, these are the slightly long ones, channel lock, long nose, needle nose pliers. This tool is the most perfect thing for when you have these type on that. Always glue will, will stop you from opening this and you're always trying to wrestle this open. You take these long nose pliers, you, there's a little lip there. You place them just between the lip and the base and you give a little push up and it pops it right open no matter how tight the glue is there. This is the tool for that job. Let's glue these uh, dowels. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. These should be dry enough to work with. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a, uh, I like to use a Japanese pole saw. 
Now, what's nice about these pull saws is that they they have a very fine tooth. Now, you can use a hack, so you can use anything with a fine tooth, but these are really good to get and saw these dowels off. Now, you do not want to remove these lines, okay? So don't try and get super close because those lines are important, okay? So let's saw off the top of these dowels. Okay, now we sawed off the dowels and you see the lines? Now we're gonna connect all those lines. Okay, we connected all the lines. What's the first thing you notice? The first thing you notice is that not one of these intersections is in the middle of the dowel, which is normally where you would drill out a hole once you plugged a hole, you go to the direct center of the dowel. That's, But see, that's where we all make the mistake. So you see, and remember this one, we moved the dowel over, look, the hole is over here. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna center punch all these and we're gonna put in a pilot hole. There's our center punch. Now we drilled our pilot holes. Now we could take it over and sand or plane the top. And there we go. Those holes are directly where the old, the center of the old screws were. Even though the dowels might look off a little bit, that's how you have to do it. That's the only way you can get registration of your old screw into an existing hole. Because like I said, if you tried to plug it with a dowel, we're always, you're gonna drill, it's just only natural, you're gonna drill in the center of the dowel and you see how all of the holes would have been off, right? That's the best way I have found to do it. What are your thoughts on that? Now, some of you are wondering, why don't you just fill the holes with some kind of Bondo or epoxy or something and be done with it? You absolutely could do that. This is just a traditional fix that's been around for years, and doweling has proven to be extremely strong when done this way. But either way, you just have to locate the holes using the lines, whether you use epoxy or fill or whatever. It's just another trick in your book. Okay, next up. Remember our buddy Kurt Bacco, who uh, posted, he brought down at the, we went to the show in Connecticut, and he brought down that gorgeous tomahawk that he made, well, like a peace pipe tomahawk. He, on his page, his Instagram page, uh, he posted a, a dart that was like a uh, carnival dart, and I said, I gotta get, I gotta have one of those. I gotta have one of those, if I have to make it or whatever. I found a few darts with the turkey feathers on, just like these are. These are number two, which is the larger ones. Usually we throw number ones here. And uh, I just want to see, I took a, kind of the worst ones missing a piece of feather here. I wanted to see if it'll accept stain to get it to that same nice vintage color, which is, you know, what, gun stock most likely. The problem would be here because over here, next to the feathers, they have like a glue running down there that holds the feathers on. Um or the flights as they're called and so now what we're going to do is we're going to sand this down and see if we can get it to accept some gun stock stain okay using some fine aluminum oxide uh, sandpaper we took it down we got rid of all the hand oils got rid of the initials that were on there now what we're going to do is we're going to take our favorite minwax gun stock shake it up a little bit and uh, we're going to Put this on with a brush I usually put it on with a swatch of paper towel but for back here you have to be very careful I don't know if it's going to accept the stain but sometimes you could just make it a little darker you got to be careful not to touch the feathers because it will draw the color into the feathers we don't want to do that so you take your time here when you get to this band here then you could turn to your regular swatch and and do it this way so let's see if we can color this Okay, here's where we're at. One coat of gun stock, two coats of amber shellac. Still not quite dark enough, but we're getting there. We always have to wax it after we like to put a little coat of wax on, but instead of wax this time, because we want it just a little bit darker, Kiwi shoe polish. Shoe polish is just wax and coloring, so let's put a little on there and see okay, what we Okay, now you remember we said we, uh, didn't want the stain to bleed into the feathers. And sure enough, these feathers are like little tubes and they actually suck up the, so we got a little bleed through over there. You see that on those feathers there? Anywhere else here? Let's see, a little bit over here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to touch that up with a little bit of uh, just thinned out white paint. We're just gonna brush over that.
Okay, now we're calling this project done. You can see how this came out. We put the little black band on it like it was in the photograph here. And what do you think? It's a, uh, it looks just like almost like a, like his carnival dart, doesn't it? I was looking to, uh, to have my own and now I do. I'll put this in a display. Now I have five others that are in better shape than this that I can do whatever I want with. But I also have some new ones, new old stock, different types. So there you go. What do you think of that project? Okay, so in closing, that was a couple of good subjects we covered. And uh, as with that dart, you know, there's an old expression that says necessity is the mother of invention. And, and I needed one, so I had to invent it, you know, <laughs> more or less out of another. But um, let me know what you think. I hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.